Doth mine eyes deceive me? After up to four times stacking and destacking, Ship 25 and Booster 9 just conducted the first full stack test together yesterday. However, for some odd reason, SpaceX did not put this pair directly into a WDR test. Instead, we have many rounds of tests this time. The battery of tests began with the liquid oxygen subcooler emitting white smoke. Then came the tower ventilation and Ship 25 started loading liquid oxygen. Its liquid oxygen bottom and liquid methane top tanks were then slowly filled to around 30 to 50% of their full volume over the next hour, which brought us to the awakening of Booster 9. We can clearly see frost on both the liquid oxygen and liquid methane tanks. While everything seemed to be coming to an end, Starship was then recycled and got frosty again. Although this is not a WDR as we were hoping for, this process is still very impressive. Thanks to the fact that they're incredibly cold at negative 160 to negative 200 degrees Celsius, or around negative 260 to negative 330 degrees Fahrenheit, the thin steel tanks containing them are quickly chilled when filled. With no no insulation to speak of, that supercooled steel then freezes water vapor out of the humid South Texas air, creating a layer of frost slash ice that generally follows the level of the cryogenic liquids in Starship's tanks. Throughout that process, those cryogenic liquids inevitably come into contact with the ambient temperature from the Starship tanks and plumbing, which are white hot in comparison, and warm up, boiling off into gas as a result. A gaseous chemical is is far less dense than its liquid form, meaning that the pressure inside Starship's fixed tanks can rapidly become unmanageable after even a small amount of boil off. To maintain the correct tank pressures, Starship, like all other rockets, occasionally vents off the gas that forms. Thus, we are left with the two main methods of interpreting the hieroglyphics of cryoproof tests, which are frost levels and venting. Next, in addition to testing Ship 25 and Booster 9, SpaceX yesterday also successfully activated and tested the water deluge system in a highly captivating manner. In less than 60 seconds, this massive amount of water was ejected. We seem to have the same pressure, but a longer duration. This is due to the added storage of more water and more high-pressure gas. Recently, the company added 82,000 gallons of capacity. Along with this, the high-pressure gas system now has nearly doubled the capacity since the last time this system was tested. SpaceX has had to follow a tedious process for its launch site to ensure rocket launch activity does not affect the ecosystem surrounding the launch pad. Cooling the pad and diverting the force of the engines away from the concrete and steel structures requires thousands of gallons of water, and even though this gets converted into steam, an excessive flow of water to the surrounding areas during the full life cycle of the Starship program should carry some risks to wildlife. But back to the ship booster pair of 25-9, measuring around 122 meters tall from ship tip to booster tail, this fully stacked rocket is again the largest ever assembled. Compared to the Falcon 9 and heavy rockets SpaceX currently operates, rates, Starship is vastly larger. It's also meant to be fully reusable, while the Falcon family, with its expendable orbital upper stage, is roughly 80% reusable. If SpaceX can meet its technical goals, Starship could eventually cost around a magnitude less to launch than Falcon while carrying roughly 5 to 20 times more payload per launch. In short, it could revolutionize the cost of access to orbit. Sadly, there are still regulatory hurdles to clear, as Booster 9 and Ship 25 can't get off the ground until SpaceX gets a launch license from the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration. Abbreviated to FAA, it's the main regulator of commercial space transport in the U.S. It's reportedly still reviewing data and environmental impacts from Star Starship's first flight test in April, which exploded soon after its launch due to engine failures. In 2021, SpaceX was chosen by NASA to develop a moon lander version of Starship as part of the planned Artemis 3 mission set for late 2025. The giant rocket will be responsible for transporting American astronauts between the lunar orbit and lunar surface by first putting them down near the ice-rich South Pole region and later launching them back to the lunar orbit for their return trip.
SpaceX is under contract with NASA to use Starship to land American astronauts on the moon before China does. We are undertaking a campaign that requires many early test flights to rapidly mature and prove out the critical systems needed to safely land NASA astronauts on the lunar surface. Bill Gerstenmayer, SpaceX's vice president of Build and Flight Reliability, told the U.S. Senate Subcommittee on Space and Science last Wednesday. However, the 121-meter-tall, 5,000-ton rocket has been sitting on its launch pad in Boca Chica, Texas, ready for a second launch attempt since early September. While SpaceX continues to wait for approval to launch from the Federal Aviation Administration, according to Gerstenmayer. He said, though flight safety Safety is important, so are innovation and maintaining U.S. leadership in space. We are at an inflection point with incredible innovation in commercial space launch. We are at an inflection point with incredible innovation in commercial space launch. The criticality is especially true in the face of strategic competition from state actors like China. China may get ahead in the new moon race, a U.S. Senate subcommittee has been warned, due to inefficient government regulations in America slowing the development of the SpaceX Starship Super Heavy rocket. Indeed, China is focusing all of its resources to gain dominance in space. A crew of three astronauts is set to launch to China's Tiangong Space Station this week for a six-month-long mission. A long March 2F rocket was rolled out to the pad at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center in the Gobi Desert in northwestern China early October 19th. The rocket is tipped with the Shenzhou-17 crew spacecraft and a telltale escape system atop the payload fairing. The 62-meter-long rocket was transferred vertically across the roughly 1,500 meters from the assembly building to the pad at around 30 meters per minute. China's human spaceflight agency CMSEO announced the rollout without providing a launch date. Recent adjustments to the orbit of the Tiangong space station suggest a launch date of October 26th. CMSEO, which is also under the auspices of the People's Liberation Army, didn't even reveal the identity of the three crew members. Crews are typically un veiled at a press event a day before liftoff. Shenzhou-17 will be the sixth crewed spaceflight mission to the Tiangong. The spacecraft will dock with the forward port of the Tiangong station's Tianhe core module. Rendezvous and docking will likely be completed around seven hours after liftoff from Jiuquan. The three astronauts will be greeted aboard the space station by the Shenzhou-16 crew, which arrived at Tiangong on May 30th. Shenzhou-16 astronauts Jing Haipeng, Xu Jiangshu, and Gui Haichao, the first Chinese civilian in space, will hand over the station to the incoming crew and return to Earth to conclude their nearly five-month stay in orbit. Shenzhou-16 astronauts conducted a range of experiments and an eight-hour-long extravehicular activity in July. They also held a live and interactive science outreach class, during which they notably lit a match and candle. China began constructing Tiangong in 2021 with the launch of Tianhe. The three-module orbital outpost was completed in late 2022 following the launch of the Wantian and Mengtian experiment modules. The country is, however, planning to double the size of the Tiangong in the coming years, a Chinese official said at the 47th International Astronautical Congress in Baku, Azerbaijan, earlier this month. We will build a 180-ton six-module assembly in the future. Shang of the China Academy of Space Technology, or CAST, said. A multifunctional expansion module with six docking ports will first be launched in the coming years to allow this expansion. CMSEO has also been looking at opening Tiangong to various commercial purposes, including tourism. It also recently selected four proposals to proceed to a detailed design study phase for developing low-cost supply missions to the space station. China is also beginning preparations for crewed lunar missions, with the aim of putting a pair of astronauts on the moon before 2030. China has officially launched the Human Lunar Exploration Project. Although all the spacecraft have something in common, sending astronauts to the moon is still quite different from a near-Earth flight, Tian Li Ping, an expert from the China Astronaut Research and Training Center, told CCTV October 16th. It has great technical difficulty and very high requirements for astronauts for which we are making relevant preparations. In the end, as it's been said many times before, allowing Starship to test is extremely important. Well, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.